Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We began the process yesterday. Today is our day number two, and we are solving math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. There is, such, there is no such thing as preparation for GMAT without the official guide. You must have the book in front of you as you and I are working together. So the deal is very straightforward. Today we're going to start, yesterday we did page number 75. Today we'll start the problems that you will find on page number 76. And the deal is very straightforward. As soon as I finish setting up the problem on the blackboard, I want you to pause the video after each and every problem, after I finish setting it up, pause the video, solve the problem yourself, and then compare your work against the work that we're going to do together. In other words, don't just sit there and stare at the screen. You're not going to get much out of it that way. Let's look at the very first problem on, the, on page number 76, number 11. In number 11, we are told that uh, an American decided to take a European vacation. And she exchanged, we are told that she exchanged her $500 for euros at the rate of, at the rate of 0.8 euro for a dollar. In other words, for a dollar, not a pound. In other words, for each of her dollars, she got 0.8 euro. 80 European cents. We are further told that while she was in Europe, we are further told that while she was in Europe, she spent three quarter of her euros, and then we are told that which, as she was coming back, she exchanged the remaining euros for dollar at dollar twenty per euro. I don't know why the bloody hell I keep writing pound. In other words, when she converted her euro back to the dollar on her way back, she got dollar twenty for each euro. Question simply is how much how many how, how many dollars does she have in her pocket as she's heading back to the US? That's all it is. Pause the video, do it yourself. So here we go. So we are told, so we know that we had five hundred dollars to begin with, and we converted at 0.8 euro for a dollar. That was the first part. Then we are told that she spent three quarter of that amount, three quarter of those euros, and now she has one quarter left over. And that one quarter she exchanged again into dollar at one dollar and twenty cents for a euro. There you go, that's our answer. We just have to work on it. That's all it is. We just have to simplify. So let's begin. First we see the dollar drops out, because at the end of course we have to have a dollar left over and the euros are going to drop out and we are left with only the dollar which is exactly what we want so we have 500 times 0.8 which is 8 over 10 times 1 quarter times 1.2 which is same as 12 over 10 so far so good I see a 10 and a 10 here let's knock down the two zeros there we go that's it we're almost done what else can we do here we have a 4 and an 8, let's knock down this 4 and convert this 8 into a 2, there we go, 2, 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 times 12 is 120, there we go. As we head back to the US after having finished our European vacations, we'll, we'll have $120 left over. Let's do number 12. Number 12 is a very straightforward, very childish problem. We have x, 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 y, y, v, v, x, x, y, w, and w. And we are asked to find the ratio of x or y over v or w. That's all it is. 
x or y. So let's find out how many x's we have. I see five x's here. I see five x's. How many y's? I see three y's. How many v's? I see one here and one here. So that's two. And the two w's right here. One w here, one w here. There you go. 8 over 4. 8 over 4, the ratio is 2 to 1. Number 13. As I said, it's, it is a very childish problem. Number 13. I didn't give you a chance actually to pause the video. I'm sure you don't need 5 seconds to pause the bloody thing. You can pause the video immediately after I finish setting it up. Number 13. In number 13, we are told that we have three jars. And the jars are labeled P, Q, and R. Here we have red beans, green beans, or green marbles, whatever you like. And here is the total. We are told this is X, this is Y, this is 80, Y, Z, this is 120, and and in the, in the jar R we have X and Z and we are told the total in this jar is 160. The question simply is what is the number of green marbles in jar R? Let's see where is the jar R and how many green marbles do we have? Here is the R and we're looking for green. Jar R, the green marbles. Essentially what they're asking is how much is Z. Pause the video, I insist. You pause the video and do it yourself. So since we are interested in finding out Z, somehow we have to find out if we can isolate the Z. There you go, I just see it here. Here we have X and Y and here we have X and Z. If we can somehow work with these two equations, we can knock out the x's and we'll end up with y and the z. And once we have an equation with y and z, we can use this equation which also has y and z and we can knock out y and we'll have our z. Let's do it together. So, first equation we're going to use, which tells us that x plus y equals 80. And the third equation we're going to use, which tells us that the x plus z has to be 160. Since 160 I wrote it like this, I have to move the 80, otherwise it's going to bother me. I prefer to have my digits lined up properly. There we go, let's subtract one from the other. So let's subtract the second equation from the other. X's are going to drop out and we'll end up with y minus z y minus z equals negative 80. Let's write that as z minus y is equal to 80. There you go. There is our equation here. Now we're going to use the second equation which is y plus z is equal to 120. Let's do it on the top. I have to first make a note of it. y plus z is 120. Remember it. y plus z is 120 and here we have I'm going to write that as I'm going to write that as z plus y and here we have z minus y is equal to 80. There we go. A straightforward simple process. Add the two equations. The y drops out as we talked about it. We have 2z equals 200 Therefore, z must be equal to 100, z, not x. There we go, z must be 100. This is the next one. Number 14. In number 14, we're going to help out a florist. A florist who is trying to make bouquets, and the bouquets we are told have to be identical. We are told bouquets that we are going to make must be identical. In other words, they have to have same number of uh, each of the flowers, same colors. 
we can have two of one and three of the other and the other one we have seven of one and thirteen of the other. The book is have to be the same because obviously it's going to sell the book. You got the idea. We are told that we have 85 red roses and 15 white roses. And we also told that we must use up, we must use all. We can't have any left over. The question is very straightforward, very simple. The question in place, what is the greatest number of bouquets can we make? The greatest number of bouquets can we make satisfy, satisfying these conditions. Conditions is that we have to use up all the flowers, all the bouquets look must identical. What's the greatest number of bouquets can I make out of this 85 red roses and 15 white roses? Do it yourself, pause the video. So here we go. So we have 85 red roses and 15 white roses. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. Divide top and bottom by 5, that becomes 3. 8 is made up of 1, 5. After we take away 5 from the 8, we have a remainder of 3. 3 goes and joins the 5, becomes 35, and 35 is made up of 7, 5. 7, 5 is a 35. There we go. 17 to 3 is the ratio. That's all. And as we use 17 to 3 ratio, each, each bouquet is going to take 17 red roses, three white roses, in other words, each bouquet is going to take 20 flowers, 17 of red ones, three of white ones, each bouquet is going to take 20 flowers, and since we have 100 total, the maximum that we can make is 5. We can make, at most, five identical bouquets. Number 15. Number 15 is another one of the childish problems they, uh, that they've given us. They are simply asking us to find the average of these numbers. 74, 69, 64, 79, 64, 84, and 77. Let's make sure that I did not mess up, otherwise there will be a problem. 74, 69, 64, 79, 64, 84 and 77. Let's see how many we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 entries. What's the average? And if you're sitting there, go ahead, do it yourself. I'll stop talking. If you're sitting there and doing the average in a very classical, very orthodox, very, very arithmetic way, the classical way, the traditional way, the orthodox way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, you're missing the point. Adding up all 700 numbers and dividing by 7 will take forever. Let's just pretend, let's just pretend that the average is 70 because I see a whole bunch of 70s here. I'm going to pretend the average is 70. So watch what happens. Think of these, think of these as 7 people. This guy's got $74, this guy's got $69 and so on and so forth. Let's take away $4 from this guy. We have a surplus of 4. We're going to pretend that the average is 70. Average of average would have been 70 if everybody has 70 dollars. Each, each and every single person, all of these seven people had exactly 70 dollars. The average would have been 70. That's not the case here. This guy has 74 dollars. He has a surplus of four dollars. This guy has a deficit of one dollar. This guy has a deficit of six dollars. This guy has a surplus of nine dollars. This guy has a deficit of six dollars. This guy has a surplus of 14 dollars. And this guy has a surplus of seven dollars. Let's see what we can do. I see negative one, negative six, and positive seven. They knock out. In other words, if you were to take the average of these three numbers, the average would have been exactly 70. Let's see what else we can do here. I see a 4 and a 14. Oh, they are both positive. There is not much we can do here. Let's knock out this negative 6 and convert this into a positive 3. There we go. There is nothing else we can do. So we have a positive 4 and a positive, positive 3 and a positive 14. That's a 4, not 14. The first entry is 4. There we go. 4 plus, 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 14 is 21. We have a surplus of $21, which needs to be divided equally among 7 people. In other words, we were wrong. The average is not 70. The average of these numbers is in fact 73. Number 16.
question is what is 125 percent of 5 as you can see another one of those childish problems we're not complaining these are gifts when somebody gives you gifts you take it and run go ahead do it yourself 125 percent 125 percent percent means out of 100 of means time five. Let's see what we can do. Uh, I'm going to divide top and bottom by 25. I was about to divide these two by five, but that's going to become very ugly. Let's divide top and bottom by 25. That becomes a four, and that becomes a five. There we go. Five times five is 25. 25 over four is six and a quarter. The answer is 125 percent. 125 percent is six and a quarter. Of course, it's six and a quarter because 100 percent, 100 percent of five is five. We need another 25 percent. If 100 percent of five is five, the 50 percent of 150 percent of five must be two and a half. Therefore, 25 must 25 percent must be one and a quarter, and hence six and a quarter. Number 17. Number 17. Here we are asked to find the median of these numbers 34, 29, 27, 46, 18, 25, 12, 35, and 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 9 of them. Since there are nine of them, it's a silly problem, very straightforward problems. We have to find the median, we have to find the middle number. Since there are nine entries, the median is going to be the fifth one. We have to locate the fifth one. One, two, three, four, and five. This is the guy we are interested in. Let's find out. The lowest one I see is 16. Then we have an 18. That's the whole idea. You just take your time. Oh, I missed 12 already. You see, this is exactly what I was talking about. That's not how it works. These questions are not difficult, but you do need to pay attention. So 12, 16, 18, then I see 25, and the next one is going to be 27. There you go, by golly. That's our median. What these entries are, we are not really interested. What those entries are, we are not interested. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we need one more. What these four entries, I really don't care. What we are interested in finding out, what was the fifth entry, we just found it. The fifth entry is 27. That's your median. That was the end of the page. That was the edge of, uh, end of the page number 76. And that's the end of our show. We'll meet again tomorrow, and we'll do the next page. All right? Bye now.